and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 100 and, 100 and something, ah shit, all staff meeting, ah, I'm going to miss that meeting, <laughs> apparently there's a big meeting at the radio station, uh, oh well, I'm doing the podcast instead, sorry guys, I couldn't attend the job that actually pays me, I was doing my podcast that actually cost me money. Uh, welcome to episode uh, I Missed a Staff Meeting of the uh, Spear Sunnies podcast. I'm here with Lewis Spears. Uh, this is the... I've got some... Look, guys, I don't want to I don't want to start this uh, podcast on a bit of a downer, but um, I've got some horrible news. I have some awful news that you need to know. And uh, look, I'm not happy about it. It's really affected my life in a negative way. And I know that you guys are going to be disappointed as well. Um, but I just need to come out and say it. Uh, as we all know, I, I was paying myself $400 a week because I got radio and it was a small income boost. And I thought, you know what, Louis, you deserve it. You can, you can get $400 a week, which is still far below the minimum wage. But it was a step up from my previous pay packet that I paid myself of $300 a week. And that $400 a week was jacket money. I could buy a jacket every now and then if I wanted to with that money. And I'm sad to announce that the glory days of jacket money is now over. And I have demoted myself back down to jeans money. Because I need to pay the rent on this enormous warehouse that I've gotten. And uh, look guys, I, I, I know, I'm, I'm sure you're as disappointed as I am that you're not going to be seeing me in any new cool jackets anytime soon. Okay? I was looking at, I was looking at a couple. I was uh, actually, I really wanted to get myself uh, a long coat from ASOS. Uh, last week but then I looked at my finances and I was like you know what I'm just not that guy anymore I'm not on jacket money I'm not balling like that anymore I can I could buy myself a pair of jeans now if I wanted to but guys guys I have enough jeans I've got two pairs of black jeans and one pair of blue jeans I don't need any more jeans but now unfortunately I'm stuck on jeans money because not only have I made this massive more than a thousand dollar a month commitment <laughs> we've also been kicked off Triple M Modern Digital which has more than half the amount of money coming in from radio <laughs> what have I done? what have I done guys? I've just leased this fucking warehouse I'm like, and then I'm like oh yeah that's fine because I've got radio now, so I'm pretty sure I'll be alright. And then the fucking week after I signed the contracts, they're like, Hey, by the way, uh, you know, just with two weeks notice, you know that Triple M Modern Digital Talent Development Program you guys have been doing? Well, yeah, we're ending it. Fuck off. <laughs> um, so I've, I've, had to, uh, I've had to demote myself, you know? So... I mean, I haven't officially demoted myself. I guess I'm going to have to do it on the podcast. Louie, mate, uh, we know you've been putting in the hard yards. Yeah, yeah, I have. I've been working really hard for you. I've been putting out a lot of content, over five hours of content a week uh, for the Lewis Spears business. And yeah, mate, we know that. We understand that. And uh, look, you've been doing great. But uh, unfortunately, the Lewis Spears revenue has taken a, taken a, a big dump since the uh, Triple M Modern Digital program has ended. So we're going to have to pay you uh, jeans money from now. But what? You only just promoted me to jacket money. I was going to buy that nice looking fake fur coat from ASOS. Now I can't afford to buy that and it's winter. I need a coat. Also, the heating situation in, in this 50 meter squared tin shed is pretty fucking shithouse. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to get frostbite working on shit for the Louis Spears business and you're just going to put me down on the jeans money? I can't ward off frostbite with jeans money, man. I got kids to feed. 
And by that I mean I have jackets to buy. Sorry, man. No jacket. I mean, maybe just buy a whole bunch of blue denim jeans and you can make yourself a denim jacket, but it's not going to be very warm. I'm sorry to do this to you. You've been demoted. So that's what that's what's been happening with me, guys. Is I've demoted myself. I, I went from uh, jacket money down to jeans money, which is fine as long as I can afford food. I, I mean, I don't give a fuck. I'll go all the way down to t-shirt money if it means that I can still come here and film. <laughs> um, so this is the the very first episode of the podcast that's filmed in the warehouse uh, and recorded. Please do let me know if you have any sound issues. I know visually. The background behind me looks shit. This is something that I am going to fix. Like behind me, it just looks like a fucking tin wall. I'm going to try and put up some posters and uh, and some other stuff as well to make the background look very nice. But for the moment, uh, what I'm working on is the sound. So if anything sounds bad, if there's too much echo, if you can hear background noise of heaters or anything like that, please do let me know if you have any issues with it um, and I'll do my best to fix it. I think at some point, because this is more of a permanent setup, what I am going to do is uh, get an actual podcast microphone that can sit on a tripod in front of my face and then there won't be any echo at all and you also won't hear the banging of me holding it like when I did used to have a microphone because it'll be on a tripod and it'll be a more permanent setup. So, but until then, uh, this is what it's going to be. If there are any sound issues, let me know and I'll fix it up for the next uh, episode. But until then, this is what it's going to look like. I've got myself a nice little couch. Uh, I've got a little fireplace here. I don't know if you can tell this is a fireplace, but it is here. Uh, I've got a couple of figures on here. I reckon I'm gonna I'm gonna try and deck this out and make it into a bit of a coolest thing to look at, so you can see some background stuff and some Easter eggs. But until then, man, this is what it looks like, and and uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm on jeans money, which is um, kind of catastrophic because I really do. I need to update my wardrobe, guys. I need I need to swag myself up because it's winter. I don't have many winter clothes, and uh, I've realized now that I am wearing all of my warmer shit that, um, guys, I think I, uh, I think I just dress like a school shooter, <laughs> like all the time now. I think that's what I, that's my aesthetic. It looks like I've just walked out of the fucking Bowling for Columbine documentary and onto the podcast. I mean, dude, look at what I'm wearing now. What I'm wearing now is if, if you're listening to this and you're not watching the YouTube version, I just dropped my fucking lid. Hang on a second. Drop my lid on the dirty secondhand carpet tiles. That's going to give me fucking syphilis for sure. Um, what I'm wearing now is if you can't tell, right, I'm wearing a fucking long black coat with like uh, uh, a black t-shirt. I've got a belt and black jeans, and then these fucking ridiculous Nike Special Forces boots with straps and fucking buckles and all this, and zips, and and there's pockets on the inside where if I, like, when I go into, like, a store and I put my hand in this, in the left inside breast of this coat, like, that... I'm I'm going for my wallet, but I see them go. Oh, he's got a gun, and he's gonna kill us all. I mean, I know we have strict gun laws in Australia, but this is a murderer. This is a six foot eight murderer that's just walked into the building. You know, it's funny. I got I got to be a bit quiet because this this place isn't soundproof yet. But um, the people that run this warehouse, uh, <laughs> the people that run this warehouse are like Russian dudes. It's like two hectic Eastern European dudes. They're really, really cool guys. But one of the guys has been helping me out, set up all the power and everything. And uh, <laughs> just this morning, he said, he, he told his son about me. He goes, oh, there is a comedian here. And uh, 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 the comedian, he filmed video. Normally we have people storing shit, but this guy, he filmed video in the warehouse. Do you know him? And uh, he didn't remember my name. So he, he tells the kid, this is what he told me, he said, he goes, uh, he looked like a uh, uh, very tall, uh, uh, wearing black, uh, Nicolas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Nicolas Cage, dude. I gotta get me an Oscar, Nicolas Cage. Really, man? Is that, do I look like the fucking 
School shooter edition of Nicolas Cage. I'm gonna Google the guy. Really, man? I'm so I'm so I got so cut. Nicolas Cage, dude. Really? The guy whose last movie was fucking National Treasure in 2004, where they put his head in a basket of bees. That's who I look like. Nicholas Cage. I've never been more offended in my life. I'm looking at pictures of him now. Actually, you know what? You know, maybe a little bit. I mean, he's going bald. I'm not. Can you kind of stop with the fucking, oh, you're going bald thing? I'm definitely not, alright? I just have... That's just my hairline. I've got a V hairline. I look like fuckboy Dracula. That's just my hairline. Everyone sees the V here, and because I slick it back, they go, oh, you're losing your hair. It's like, oh yeah, really? I've been losing my hair since I was fucking zero. Because that's just how my hair grows, man. I'll let you know when uh, when I'm losing my hair, because I'll start freaking out about it. You know I won't bullshit. I, you know, I, don't, I don't know if I am going to lose my hair. I really don't want to, but I don't think I will, because my family's genetics on both sides is, like, incredibly good. Um... My grandpa is like late 70s. I think he might be 80. He's got a full head of hair. I mean, it's white, but he's got all of his hair. My dad's 50. He's got dreadlocks and has all of his hair, not even showing signs of balding. Uh, on my mum's side, there, there was never a grandfather in the picture, but uh, sh my grandma has all of her hair, and she's pretty old, and some women start to lose it at that age. And... Uh, and my uncle on her side has all of his hair and he's 50. Meaning that my grandfather would have passed those genetics on to mum and then to me. So if my uncle still has all of his hair and my fucking grandpa does, that's two sides. I don't think I'm going to lose it. But you better believe as soon as I do, I'm going to start telling you about it. Because, man, do you remember? Man, you know what? The moment I start losing my hair... And it becomes more than slightly noticeable. I'm shaving it. I'm giving up. I'm shaving it or I'm doing whatever freaky science shit I can to revive that. Whether you take pills or get fucking good implants. Actually, I don't want to. I don't want fucking hair plugs. You've seen that shit. It doesn't work, does it? But I don't know. Maybe by the time I do start going bald, they will have perfected hair plugs. Because, you know, I feel like, I feel like fake titties are pretty good now. Whereas, I never, like, even five years ago, I never would have said that shit. I would have been like, never get fake titties. But now, ladies, girls, if you're listening, hey, maybe, maybe, but you know what? You're going to spend a lot of money. That's something that I never got. It's like one, it's like of all of the things to catch a bargain on, like, food, sure. Uh, you got a good deal at Uniqlo? A two-for-one hoodie deal? Awesome! You got two hoodies for 50 bucks? That's great. That's awesome. But getting two titties half off? No. No. Or a tattoo? No. You don't need a bargain on a tattoo, alright? Anytime I see someone, like, enter a competition for a free tattoo... Or tag three friends so they can get 50% off a back piece. Or just sign up to some tattoo artist half off, uh, half off Monday deal to get their forehead done. It's like, dude, what are you doing? Okay, you don't want a cheap tattoo. If I ever get a tattoo, I want the cunt with a six months waiting list. I don't want the guy who just started and he's giving 40% off deals because he just started up in a new shop and he thinks that he owns the place. But in reality, he's only making 20% of what he actually fucking pulls in at the shop. Alright? I don't want that shit. Anyone, you know what? Any tattoo artist working under an hourly rate? Nah. Nah, man. No. Sorry. Okay? Not interested. I want the guy that has a six-month waiting list and charges a thousand dollars per centimeter. That's the dude I want to tattoo me. And I don't think, I don't know, I don't know if I ever will get tattoos. I thought about getting something for my comedy special, but I'm not sure. I don't know. We'll have to see. 
Speaking of, guys, I do... Hang on. What have I... Oh, I need to also need to apologize. I'm sorry that I didn't do a podcast last week. We were setting up this space and it just wasn't ready yet. And then also this one is coming a day late and it's for the same reason. The space just wasn't ready yet. Now it is and uh, I can get back up into a content schedule where I'm, you know, moving, where I'm, uh, what am I doing? Working ahead of schedule. So I will have a backlog uh, coming up soon, especially because now that Triple M Modern Digital is over, uh, we're only on radio once a week uh, now. So I have so much more time to create videos. Uh, I'm going to give an update about what's going on with radio later in the podcast and uh, all that kind of shit. But now I had to talk about something else. What was I saying? I, this, is, whenever, this is one of those fucking rambling ones. I've, I've got all of these notes and I haven't covered anything other than I dress like a school shooter and I'm demoted myself down to jeans money. All right. Uh... Oh, yes, that's right. The the comedy special. So, uh, I want to give an update on the special. It's like 95% done. So, what's happening today is after I record this podcast, I'm going to the director Antonio's house. We are going to have one more once over where we watch the whole thing, change a few camera angles, edit little tiny mistakes or anything that we didn't like after we've done the more bigger general one. Uh, <clears throat> and then it's done. I'm pretty sure. As long as he's happy with it, we might need to take one. He might need to take one more pass at it with the sound mix. But as far as my involvement, done. So the comedy special is pretty much done. We're only a little bit behind schedule, like literally a couple of days behind schedule, which is cool. Um, but uh, I do have some. I, yeah, fuck it. I'm going to say it. I've got some pretty exciting news. Um, I'm not going to say what company, uh, but a very big distribution service from America has uh, hit me up and uh, they want to distribute it. Uh, meaning they're going to pitch it to television networks and streaming services like Netflix, HBO, Comedy Central, all of the big ones. Uh, they're going to pitch it to them. Uh, if I if I sign the deal, I, have, I haven't really seen the deal yet. I have, I'm, I'm talking with them via Skype tomorrow morning. Uh, I'm not going to say, you know, the name of it or get too excited or promise anything because I don't fucking know. But I do know that, hey, that was my goal was to get a big American company to see it and pay attention to it. So whether or not I decide to go with them or try and go on my own, uh, that will, you know, be revealed. So essentially what will happen is uh, if I decide not to sign with them, the comedy special will come out probably in the next two months. Hopefully next month. No fucking promises. I don't want to rush this thing. I want to perfect it and get it done right. Um, but if I do sign with them, it will then be coming out on their schedule. Meaning they will have to essentially get a definitive, a definitive yes or no from all of the streaming and television networks before we can release it. You know what I mean? Like it wouldn't make sense to put it out online when we're waiting for, I don't know, HBO to say yes or no because then you release it and then they go, why would we want something that's already been released? So in terms of the comedy special, if I don't like what these guys tell me and I decide to do it myself, it'll come out soon. If I do go with them, it'll come out when it does. Uh, but I, I will obviously know more when I when I know more, so, but either way, very very good news. It's ninety five percent done, and uh, a fucking huge like it's a big deal, man. A really really big company want to look at it, um, and uh, you know, they if anyone if anyone in the world can get me on Netflix, it's those people. I'm not counting on it, um, but. All like my goal with this comedy special was for people from Netflix to see it. Whether or not, whether or not they said yes, I wasn't fussed by. But if they saw it, that was the goal. Even if they said no, I'd be super happy with that because it's something that I can be like in three years or whatever when I do another one, I can be like, hey, remember me? Well, I'm ne I'm even better now. Would you like the new one? And you I'll throw in the old one for free. It's that it's that kind of thing. So. 
I don't know. We'll see. I'll keep you guys in the loop, and uh, we'll see what happens with it. But uh, it's really, really cool, and I'm, I'm fucking happy with it. <coughs> oh, I don't know how to drink. Um, speaking of, guys, I'm, st I'm still... How long are we going for? Oh, 20 minutes. I'm still sober, right? I don't drink. I want you guys to know that because a whole lot of you people saw my Instagram and Snapchat stories from when we went out on Friday night after the final AAA Modern Digital radio show. Uh, I want to clarify, no, I was not drinking and no, I wasn't doing drugs. I still never have, I still never will. Uh, I'm just a fucking dickhead. I think if you if you watch those that shit, you know what it was? It was just the culmination of a ridiculous night. It was like, we realized that we've been working hard as hell for eight months uh, on this modern digital thing for fuck all money and little to no reward outside of getting technically good at radio, which obviously is awesome. Um, uh, and then we just realized, fuck, we did it. We're, we've graduated from it. We're on Fox now. Hopefully we can get more and we don't have to worry about next week. So let's all go nuts. So the whole team went out. It was me and Luke and uh, producer James, Radio Mike, uh, Tripod Todd, who films the show. Um, and then also, <laughs> Reese Maston was there too. And then all of Reese Maston's crew, like his girlfriend, his manager, all, like all of those people. And it was just the most surreal fucking night where me and Luke constantly kept running away to talk in private and be like, dude, do you remember when we were playing Reese Maston songs kind of as a joke and came up with an imaginary dance as a meme while we were on tour because we were bored? Now, because of that and how much we've done it on radio, we're actually friends. Like, I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm friends with Reese Maston and that's the, that's the coolest shit ever. <laughs> I, it still fucking trips me out and it's not like I'm not fangirling I'm just saying me and Luke created a fucking meme and then we befriended the guy that's amazing uh, and, and he's a really cool guy and we went to um, the, the weekend before that we went to his live show and fuck man that guy can sing uh, he's not doing the whole pop X Factor horse shit that Sony uh, wrangled him into I think he's left Sony uh, and he's gone out on his own and he's doing music that he actually wants to do he's doing like rock and blues stuff and fuck he's really really good man um, like I was seriously impressed by just his live performance and, and, and the do I don't think I've ever heard a better singer live uh, and I've seen like Halsey and fucking Lady Gaga with my mum when I was 15 and all this other shit, but I, like, Reese Maston smashed the shit out of them. So, I hope he goes really well with the independent route, and it, and it sounds like he's really trying to move on from that pop shit, and uh, he didn't have the best run, surprise, surprise, with a fucking multinational record label that he signed when he was 16 after winning a talent competition. Like, sounds like he went through the bit uh, a bit of the corporate ringer there, when, uh, you know, obviously, as anyone would, if you signed a fucking huge deal when you were 16, you, you wouldn't know what you were doing, so, um, uh, I hope it, hope it all goes well for him, he's actually just released an EP, if you do want to check out some rock and blues stuff, I actually would recommend it, it's like called, uh, Suitcase of Stories, it's like seven tracks, I recommend you guys check it out, um, because <clears throat> that's, that's something that I've been, I've been trying to do, man, I'm trying to, like, broaden my music, uh, tastes because all I've been listening to since I was like 18 you know when you first develop like a personality and a taste like from 16 to 18 you're like I'm this kind of person I think and I like this kind of music yeah and that's who I am you know when you first figure out your personality and your taste uh, I've been listening to, to Aussie hip hop was my thing that I landed on. I've been listening to Australian rap like Cursor Forte, Complete Manners, Greeley, all those guys, uh, all my, all, you know, all those people that are my friends as well. I've been listening to that since I was eighteen, and uh, I just kind of realised in the last couple of weeks is like, wow, that's all I listen to. I should try and listen to some other stuff too. Not because I'm sick of Oz rap. I mean, that's still my fucking number one. But just so I could 
broaden my taste and and also listen to what people are currently listening to. Like I don't ever want to be that old cunt, you know, like that fifty year old cunt who, who listens to the new music and goes, "Oh, what are the bloody kids playing? It's all garbage." And I felt myself doing that already with like, "Oh, bloody auto tune rap. It's uh, who are these fucking? Where's the lyricism?" And I don't ever want to be that cunt. Because it's like, dude, it's not bad music, it's just new music, and you hate change. Oh, why doesn't music sound like it did 20 years ago? Uh, it's like, dude, because uh, it's kind of objectively better. Like, ob- like, objectively, the techniques, the recording equipment, the skills, the production, the singing, everything about music is pretty much better. It's just that... No, it's harder and harder to find groundbreaking new sounds because there are so many more people doing it and there has been for a really long time. I think that's the thing where it's like, oh, they don't make good rock music anymore. It's like, no, man, they just don't make new... They, like, rock music has has is not a new genre anymore, Right? Where you haven't... Like, there was a time where before rock music, and then some guy started going... And then everyone was like, Oh my God, what's that? It's so new. I must learn how to play it on the guitar and then not learn any other songs, but play it at parties to pick up girls. Like, rock was a new sound. And the same thing happened with hip-hop, where there was it was, it was all like... And then Run DMC came over and was like, Hey, fuck the police. Was that Run DMC? Ah, oh, you're a fuck. That's the whitest thing you've ever said, man. That was NWA. Um, I'm, I'm leaving it in. I'm not going to edit that out. I'm going to punish myself. Oh, that's the whitest shit I've ever said in my life. And then Run DMC came along and was like, Fuck the police. You're a fucking moron, man. You know that. I've seen NWA as well. I, I saw the movie. And then, and, then I, and then I loved it so much that I listened to all of Dr. Dre's 6 out of 10 album. And was like, oh, oh yeah, I guess this is pretty good. And it's not. It's like, dude, you did 2001. You should have left it there. <laughs> um, but yeah, what, I, what, I've been, what I've been getting at is I've been trying to broaden my music taste and just listen to what people are currently listening to. So I started out checking out uh, all of the new rappers like, like you know, fucking um, Trippy Red and 6 9 and Lil Xan and uh, all the fucking Lils. Um, Lil Pump. Uh, who else have I been listening to? I've been listening to a bit of fucking Uzi Vert. Um... A whole bunch of Diplo stuff as well. Lil Yachty. Just any any cunt that starts with Lil. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go on a bit of a Lil Rampage here. Um, and dude, it's it's uh, it takes a little while to get used to because it is so different. Like all the auto-tune and the production. And, and it's it's more, more of a fusion of production and words. But I fucking really like it now. Like it took me a day or two to kind of get the vibe that they were going for. Uh, and then when I realized, oh, these cunts are like... 18, 19, 20, why would they be rapping about anything meaningful? They're fucking 21 years old with $7 million in the bank. Uh, I wouldn't be saying anything useful for the culture either. And, and, and don't give me that, don't give me that fucking, oh, they're just idiots. It's like, oh yeah, what were you doing when you were 19? Were you doing the same thing, but without being a millionaire? Yeah, I think you were. I think instead of, Rapping about drinking lean and uh, and doing coke in nightclubs while also getting paid to appear at that nightclub about 40 grand per night. You were instead just doing that in a fucking park, weren't you? I know because I saw it. I was, I was there. I mean, I wasn't doing it. But I'm not saying that, that that makes me any better because I was just a, as much as a fucking loser as you were. So don't give me that, oh, man, all they talk about is drugs and shit. It's like, bro, he's fucking 18. That's all he's doing. That's all you were doing. What were you When you were 18, were you sitting down writing fucking poems about how to change the world? No. 
You were trying to finger some 17 year old girl in an alleyway next to the house party that you're at because you're just as much of a loser as Lil Yachty is. The only difference between you and Lil Yachty is Lil Yachty has $9 million in his bank account and a $600,000 chain and you have $7 in your bank account and a $3 bag of good. <laughs> so don't give me any of that deep and meaningful shit unless you are being deep and meaningful when you are fucking 18, alright? Sorry. Sorry to tell you. Sorry to burst your fucking aloof bubble, but you're not smarter than Lil Yachty unless you got more than him. Uh, that being said, I hated his mixtape. It was fucking trash. <laughs> um, but some of the new music that I've been getting into, I'll tell you guys the new music uh, that I've been really enjoying. Uh, I'll just look up on my phone. What am I listening to at the moment? Um, Kanye's new album, probably actually one of the best albums I've heard in a long time. Fucking phenomenal. Uh, and I really hate that it's only 24 minutes. Uh, but that's him being a weird cunt as usual. Uh, really, really good though. I really enjoy it. Uh, just so you guys know that I'm not abandoning uh, real, raw rap. I've also been listening to 50 Cent's Get Rich or Die Trying album. Many Men, uh, Wish Death Upon Me. Probably one of the best rap tracks of all time. Listen to uh, Post Malone's new album, Brilliant. Uh, oh, that's what I've been listening to. Uh, I, I've been listening, really thoroughly enjoying... <laughs> and this just sounds garbage. I'm going to say it and you're going to hear it and you're going to go, This sounds fucking trash and you know what you've probably got a good point but give it a chance i've been i've been really thoroughly enjoying <laughs> the collaborative album by smoke perp and murder beats bless yo trap uh the production on it is fucking awesome and i just you know what i i, I really i'm starting to really enjoy mindless money rap just because it's fun and it's a bit of escapism. Like, I don't always... I can't get around... I think I'm too white to enjoy Kendrick Lamar because I just don't... Like, I feel like if I was white and American, I think I would get it because you're surrounded by that all the time. But I'm a white dude from Australia. I don't... I don't know what Kendrick's saying. Like, the black of the berry, the sweet of the fruit. It's like, yeah, I'm sure that's an analogy to, like, racism in America, but... Uh, I don't know. I'm 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 white and from Australia, uh, so I don't get it. <laughs> Sorry, Triple J. <laughs> um, uh, I've been really enjoying uh, Trippy Red's uh, album, uh, A Love Letter to You. And but what I've what what really got me into all of these people was um, uh, Diplo's California EP. It's just six tracks with six different. Uh, rappers and singers and the production on it is is beautiful uh, and it's really it I, I suppose it kind of just really points out what you can do now with production and with rap that I, I fucking I really recommend it it's called California EP by Diplo and it's got I really I really like the song Wish uh, Colorblind and Worry No More and those there's like ones by Lil Yachty ones by Trippy Red ones by Lil Xan I don't really like I listened to Lil Xan's album and I, f I really didn't like it. Plus, the cunt's called Lil Xan. It's like, dude, I'm not going to get around a dude who's called, uh, named after a fucking prescription drug. Sorry, mate. Change your name. And maybe I'll listen to your beanie fucking weird head, alright? Um, but yeah, I would, re yeah, that, I mean, it's just been trying to, like, broaden my horizons with music. I've also started to, uh, now that I've gone into, like, new, uh, American SoundCloud rap, I've started branching out outside of rap um and I've, I've been listening to like bag raiders like happy music you know no one listens to fucking happy music everyone's like oh a song's only good if it makes you feel deep and emotional and sad man because life is so hard and uh i have a lot of struggles uh even though uh my life is so good that i can uh, uh afford not only a Spotify premium, but also Tidal, because I wanted to listen to Jay-Z's album a couple of days before it came out, so I have Spotify and Tidal, and even though I, I don't use Tidal, uh, I just haven't been bothered to cancel the payment of Tidal, so I've kind of just been spending about $120 a year 
instead of just you know going on a website and, and pressing cancel because that spending a hundred dollars and twenty dollars a year is easier in my first world life than clicking three times to cancel that subscription haha -ha. Africans can't afford food but my life sucks <laughs> it's I'm just I'm sick of sad cunt music I'm over it I'm a weirdo I'm a creep really are ya or are you part of one of the biggest bands of all time and you're a multi-millionaire and you'll never have to worry about anything ever again and even if you do have mental health issues you can afford to sort them out by seeing a therapist seven days a week if you wanted to because you're part of the biggest band in the world you're not a weirdo and clearly people like you cause you have millions of dollars in the bank <laughs> It's, and it's like all these fucking... I know, I'm just sick of sad songs. I don't want to turn something on and be like, Ugh, I'm bummed out. I want to turn something on and be like, yeah. You know what? I can do that. I can... Today is nice. You know what? The sun is cool. Hey, girls are pretty, aren't they? You know what? I do love my girlfriend. That's what I want to hear when I turn on a song. Not, I'm a creep. I'm a weirdo And I'm a fucking sad cunt <laughs> I need to lighten up It's like I'm over it That's why I'm exclusively listening To Bag Raiders and Coldplay Oh my god, someone just messaged me to do something No, I don't want to do that. You know what I'm going to do, guys? You know, I was talking about how I say no to people. You know what I'm going to do live on the podcast? I'm going to say no to this cunt who wants to hang out. Probably wants to pitch me some idea. Wants to get my thoughts on it. Hey, man, you work on radio. That means that you can get my song played. No, it doesn't. I don't know who chooses the music. I don't give a fuck. When the music comes on, we turn the sound off so we don't have to listen to it. And then we talk about what we're going to do next. Talk break. I don't care about the music. I just want to talk on the radio. What do you think I am? The National Music Director of Fox? No. I'm getting paid $200 a week to do 6 to 8 p.m. on a fucking Sunday night. Melbourne only. Not even national. I got no power in that station. Hey, man. Hey man, I really want to be an intern at the radio station. Oh really? Do you? Why don't you ask them, huh? Because I don't. I'm. I'm technically not even employed by the radio station. I just get paid a set fee per show that could end arbitrarily depending on when they decide. So hey, how about you hit up the radio careers department and when you get a job, could you try and get me one there because my job security doesn't exist. All right, what am I saying to this guy? Or girl, I'm keeping them anonymous. All right. They just want to hang out. And I know, I know they want something. So here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to live by my motto. I'm not going to give them an excuse. I'm just going to say no. Hey, blank. Uh, thanks for messaging me. Hope you've been well too. Glad to hear you're working hard. Uh, sorry. I don't really know anything about that. You're probably better off. Uh, probably better off hustling on your own and posting about the journey on social media that will help you much more than I could. Best of luck with everything. I hope it goes well for you. Sorry I can't be of any help. And then, even though it's a Facebook message, I'm going to sign it off with Lou like it's a fucking email. <laughs> no! I don't want to do that. Nope.
Oh, that feels so good. And even if they think I'm rude, I don't care because I know you wanted something. That's my life now. Is saying no. Nope, I don't want to do that. Not gonna, do don't want to see ya. Sorry, man. Hey, sounds really fun, but I'm busy. Can't do that. Oh, what's that? You want to do it next weekend? Sorry, I'm busy permanently. Uh, in regards to you. Like, I'll do stuff with other people, but, you know, when I look at my schedule, I actually physically can't write meet up with you on this day. It's impossible. Sorry, it's a bit of a glitch in my fucking Gmail calendar app. It doesn't work. <laughs> I'm a fucking asshole. And I don't care. You have to be. You have to be a fucking asshole with your time. Uh, because you can't get time back and once you start doing shit on your own, everybody wants your time. Because for some reason they feel like it's more magical than using their own time. What else do I want to talk about? Uh, comedy special. Uh, warehouse. Oh yeah, the warehouse is, uh, is fucking great. Uh, I think this is the first week that I'm actually going to be in it and filming stuff. Uh, I'm going to do uh, a lure review tomorrow. I'm going to film it. Uh, I don't think it'll be up tomorrow, though, because we don't have internet in here yet. Oh, it might be up to. It'll definitely be up this week. Maybe tomorrow. Probably not, though. Um, but I'm going to be filming it, and then I'm also going to do a bi-monthly bull in here this week for to be released next week because I'm actually going on a cruise next week with my girl. So I need to get a backlog running so that you guys don't miss out on any content. I'm also going to be pre-recording a podcast. So um, forgive me if something current in the news happens in the next couple of days and I don't talk about it. It's because I'll be recording it in a couple of days. But you will get it uh, on Sunday as well. And all of the Patreon supporters will get it early. I'm probably going to do that one on Thursday or Friday depending on my schedule. Um, and uh, Patreon supporters will get it early. So... Uh, yeah, if you want to help me fit out the warehouse, I need a few things. I need, especially for the podcast space, this background looks really ugly. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I need to plaster all of the walls and soundproof them. and Because it's so fucking cold in here, dude. Like, I've, I've uh, uh, blown the circuits of the power three times in a row trying to heat this space. And uh, I've just realized that if I want to work in here, I just have to dress like a school shooter. Otherwise, I'm going to get frostbite and die. Um, so if you can hear the heater going, that's why. Um, but, you know, after the tour and when Patreon support picks up more, I will plaster the fuck out of this. But for the moment, it's all set up and ready to go. So content's going to be coming at your face incredibly fast. And uh, uh, I just, I'm so wrapped, man. And I want to thank... All of, especially you guys listening to the podcast, like you guys started supporting me on Patreon before I had even signed the contract to this lease to encourage me to sign it because you guys believed in, in it. And you know, I've been talking about this for so long. So thanks so much, man. This, this, this is so fucking cool. And it's really, really good. And it was so necessary for what I'm doing. Like now, now I just, now that I'm, like I'm here, right? I'm going to finish this podcast and then I'm going to walk three steps, lure review set up, and I'm just going to fucking film something. Uh, and that, I mean, that creative freedom and, and time and the, and the creative space, just, you know, I never had that before. So thanks to you guys, I do. So if you want to support me on Patreon, check it out. Just Google Lewis Spears Patreon. All of the links are there. There's cool rewards as well. Like you get early access to the podcast and videos, everything like that. Um, and also there's a new Discord chat. Uh, because the Facebook group didn't really work. Well, it worked, but it wasn't the best. Not everybody has Facebook or wants to use Facebook all the time, but Discord is great. It's kind of like Skype, but better. Uh, so there's chat rooms and, and there's different categories. So we have like Lou Review Discussion, uh, Luke and Lewis, uh, Bi-Monthly Bull. We've got suggestions for content. We have a general chat. We've got a meme chat. And then there's also voice channels that people are in and out of. And it's like really building a little fucking Patreon community around what I'm doing. And that's one of the rewards. Um, if you support me on Patreon, you can get access to the uh, the Discord. And I'm, of course, I'm also in there all the time as well. Um, oh, fuck. We haven't done miscellaneous bit at the end. Uh, let me get that up, shall we? Um, and uh, then i got to go because I need to go and meet the director um, to talk about the, the special. I think I've been going for an hour. I can't really tell what, what time I've been going for, but I will let you know. Um, 
All right. Uh, while I'm getting this up, if you want to send an email to podcast at lewspears.com, if you need some life advice, or if you have a question or something you think that I would find entertaining, hang on, I'm putting my password in. I can't speak when I'm writing. Oh, I bet I'm going to fucking forget it. Is it the one with the, the... Oh, man. Hang on, let me hack myself for a second. Is that it? Oh, use different passwords for every account that you use to prevent people from getting into your account. Yeah, I didn't know uh, the people that pre would prevent would also fucking include me. Uh, oh, here we go. All right, I'm in. All right. Um. Oh, I'm, I only got time to do one email, but I got two bangers. I'm going to do the next. Both of these will be done, but I'm going to do them. Jeez, which one should I do? Do I do... I got two from ladies. Girls! Uh, first one. My fuck buddy's racist housemate. That's pretty good. Second one. I'm a lesbian and I like my best friend. Ooh. Both of these are good. You know what? I'm going to do the shorter one because I need a run. And I'll do the long one next week. Uh, so we're going to go for... Uh, I'm a lesbian and I like my best friend. Cool. Uh, <clears throat> let me just check if they want to be anonymous. I, I should have got this up beforehand. Cool. All right. Uh, I'm a lesbian and I like my best friend. Hey, Lou, call me Sarah because you're a fuckwit and come up, can't come up with the uh, original names. Yeah, fair point. My story begins last year at the end of year 10. My best friend Lisa came out to me and then a few weeks later, I did the same. Oh, a couple of lesbians coming out together. That's cute. It's funny that you guys gravitated towards each other uh, before either of you knew the other was gay. Uh, long story short, she is now out fully, and I'm still in the metaphorical closet. Okay, so I guess you've told her, but not everyone in your life. That makes sense. Here's where it gets qu here's where it gets interesting. I started to become attracted to her not long after she came out, and now I'm fucked. I like my best friend, and I don't know if she likes me, although she's never said anything directly. There has been a few hints, but I might be taking them the wrong way. What the fuck do I do if... What the fuck do I do? I feel if I say anything and it's not reciprocated, uh, that puts our friendship in a fucked position. Any advice at all would be amazing. Have an unwavering, uncountably, tremendously shit one. Uh, P.S. The story about your dog with some heavy feels. Uh, and... And uh, congrats on the warehouse. You might actually become weekly. <laughs> that's the fucking plan. Um, yeah, uh, that's that's difficult. See, uh, I'm just I'm gonna say, in my extensive experience of being a 16 year old lesbian woman, I'm gonna say that you potentially have hit the fucking jackpot here uh, because I don't think I might be wrong but I think you're going to be very hard pressed to find another gay woman who you're attracted to in your year level at your school that you also get along with so this could be great or that could be awful because if you do fuck this up, not only is it like the only person who understands what it's like to be gay, uh, you've also lost a... F well, what, not only have you blown your chance with the only gay woman, you've also blown your friendship with someone who understands what it's like to be you, which is a young gay woman. Um... I would say go for it. But maybe go about it a little bit softer than I would normally recommend. I would say, hey, I don't know, I guess, what's her, what's your friend's name? Fucking uh, Lauren. No, Yanni. Or Laurel. Hey, Yanni. This is what I would do. I'd say, hey, Yanni. And she'd be like, did you say Laurel? you say, yeah, yeah, I said Yanni. No, no, you're saying Laurel. No, I'm saying Yanni. Really? It sounds like that's, the one. that's Laurel. No, no, Yanni. I know, that's what I'm saying. Anyway, bit of a 
topical fucking joke for you cunts about three weeks later that meme I would say to your friend Laurel I would say uh, hey uh, I know we're both uh, passionate about the puss I'm feeling a little bit passionate about yours I and I, I feel like you're doing that to me I'm getting the vibe that you're into me is that what's happening maybe you know what maybe don't don't go hey I like you do you like me maybe just be a little bit softer and, and, and approach her and say hey just what you told me and and get her to say it first and then go hey I know that we're both like gay. Are you, are you into me, or am I picking up the wrong signals? Are you kind of getting, giving me signals that you're interested in me, and then just see what she says. And I feel like even if she says no, you'll be able to tell if she means yes. And if even if she says no, but you think she means yes, I would then say. So if she goes, ah, oh, no, is that weird? Should I not be? No, I'm not. Like, if she does it, something like that, I would then say, it's fine if you are, because I'm into you as well. Uh, and approach it that way. So kind of come to her and be like, this, is, uh, this won't ruin our friendship. This is a safe space for you and me. Are you attracted to me? And if she says yes or says no in a yes way, I would then go, well, the reason I asked is because I'm actually quite into you and I was wondering if uh, you're into me because if you are, maybe we could try out us. Um, and I suppose if she says, look, I don't, I, I don't really think I see her saying no because again, not only have you hit the jackpot, but so is she. You know what I mean? Like, I... I, I, I I imagine being a 16 year old lesbian chick, there's, you're not really turning down a lot of offers from other chicks. You know what I mean? I don't think there'd be too many other people out there for you. I'm not saying that means that you should settle. You definitely should not settle for someone just because they're the only gay cunt in your vicinity. <laughs> <laughs> um, you should just wait if you're rather than settling with someone you're not interested into, not not interested in just because they like the same bits that you do. Uh, but uh, I would say it is if if you are both into each other, fucking jackpot, and you should definitely go for it. So um, yeah, that's what I would say. It's just kind of approach it in a more softer way and say, are "You into me? Uh, if so, great." Maybe we should try this. If not, that's fine. Uh, I'm into you, but if you're not into me, that's totally cool. I'm going to try and find someone on christianmingle.com or whatever. I don't think it'll ruin your, your, your friendship um, because I have, a, I have a sneaking suspicion that she's... When you came out to her, she was like, Oh, thank fuck. At least a potential pussy I could lick. You know what I mean? Instead of, oh no, she's, you know, I, I bet she's probably thinking the same thing that you are, which is, oh, I'm into this chick, but I don't want to ruin our friendship. So if you're both thinking that, go for it. And uh, I, I wish you both the best. Let me know how it goes. I hope you can get laid. All right. I was going to end that, I was going to end that sentence with use protection. Um, but um then I then I realized how uh, uh, the fundamentals of, of uh, same sex sex is that there is no risk. So I mean, just have have safe sex in the general sense of don't let her punch you in the face without wearing a boxing glove. All right. <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. That's the end of the podcast. Um, I really appreciate you you guys' patience with me while I got the warehouse set up. Uh, from now, the podcast will be on time or even at early for Patreon supporters and it'll be filmed here. Once again, let me know if you have any issues with sound. I know visual-wise this doesn't look amazing, but that is just how it is until I can fix it because that's more expensive to fix than sound. But let me know if you have any sound issues. I'm looking for background noise, uh, unforgivable echo, anything that you pick up, let me know. 
Um, join the Speared Sundays podcast group. There's always fucking banger memes and shit being posted in there, and I love reading all the comments and the and the fan art and all that kind of shit. So, um, and support me on Patreon if you want early access to what I do and you want to help me afford the fucking rent on this this uh, tin shed surrounded by brothels. All right, that's the end of the podcast. Thank you very much for listening. I'm Lewis Spears, and uh, I hope you have a very very shit one. Oh, radio, radio. That's right. Um, I forgot to tell you. So what's happening with radio is, yes, we're off Triple M Modern Digital. No, that's not a bad thing. So the reason we're off there is because we have graduated from that training program. The digital station was a training program. It was never meant for us to stay on there. So us leaving it is actually a very, very good thing. Uh, However, it does mean there are less Luke and Lewis shows uh, in the short term. So what's happening now is we are permanently on Fox. So we're on Fox Sunday nights from 6 to 8 p.m. And then, you know, if you're outside of Melbourne, you can listen to the podcast version and we've started filming the full shows. So from now for the next month, it'll be just once a week every Sunday. But we've just been locked in for the survey break fill-in. So quick backstory, uh, three times a year, Radio ratings do not count, so all of the regular shows take two weeks off and then uh, people fill in for them. Uh, so we're going to be on, I think it's like July 1st, I, don't, I can't remember the exact date, sometime in July we're going to have two weeks on Fox from 10pm to midnight, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, so four days a week. Um, we'll stop doing Sundays to do that for the two weeks. And uh, that'll, that's a really big opportunity because that's, you know, weeknights. That's a huge thing. That's a big step up from Sunday nights. And it's four times a week. But it'll just be for two weeks. And then we'll go back to Sundays until an opportunity arises. I think we're at this stage now with the radio show where, and it's the very nature of the radio business, we're at a weird stage where we can't really be promised the next thing because there are no opportunities that are not filled if you get what I mean so all of the time slots that we could get are currently filled that doesn't mean we won't get it but it does mean they can't promise it to us because we're at the stage now where if we get a new time slot that means someone loses that time slot so obviously they can't promise us hey you guys are going to be on power tools hey you guys are going to be on from 8 a.m to 10 a.m because that means the people who are currently on 8 a.m to 10 a.m will be like cool guys we're going to get this slot then they'll find out about it through us and then be like uh are we losing our job next month how am i going to pay rent so we're at this weird stage where we're trying to get more but we can't really get promised anything because you know that means that any opportunity we get in radio now means someone will lose that time slot. Uh, that being said, I feel very, very confident that we are going to get more. Uh, it's just a, you know, a bit of a politics game of where that next slot is and how how we get ready for it and when it comes. But that I, I think that it will come. But until then, the confirmed thing is Sunday nights until the end of time, unless something else happens. And... Uh, survey break next month for two weeks so that'll be really really good it'll be cool to do daily radio on fox which is something we've we've never done before all right that's the end of the podcast thanks for listening patreon warehouse speared sunday's facebook group rate the podcast on itunes give me a thumbs up on youtube and uh i'm lewis spears i'll see you next sunday and i hope you have a fucking shit one see you later